Hi everyone, it's Anthony back with another video and today we're going to be going through all of my empties and quasi-empties of October. So um, yeah, it's a nice Sunday afternoon here um, just outside of Denver, Colorado. It's nice and snowy and cold outside so I've just been wanting to bundle up all day and just kind of relax so not really doing any activities or anything like that and so I've been doing a lot of skincare reviews and I figured I'd go ahead and do this empties review because even though we still have just about a few more days left of October, there really isn't anything else that I'm planning on finishing up with during the month. Everything else is going to roll into November. So let's go ahead and jump right in with the uh, products that I used completely are real empties, official empties. Then we'll talk about some things that I am uh, loving that I still love, so I want to save the last little bit that I have for a rainy day just in case I need it again. So they're empties in the sense that I moved on, but want to save what I have left. And then empties that are, they still have product in them, but I was not a fan. So kind of the fails for this month, there's only a couple. So let's dive into what I uh, went ahead and finished completely. And we'll start with the Beekman 1802 Buttermilk Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm. So this is a balm style cleanser, just like you would expect. There's a little spatula in here. I can, I can show you what the actual package looks like. Um, so yeah, there's a little spatula there on the top, which is actually nice that it kind of just sits there on the top, but you just scoop out some product, work that into dry skin, that'll help to break up makeup, excess oil, sunscreen, those types of things, and then you rinse it clean. So very, very typical cleansing balm. I ended up not really being a huge fan of this product for a couple of reasons. It did technically work okay, but there wasn't a lot in the way of emulsification. So it, it does rinse and kind of turn milky and rinse away, but it leaves a lot of um, almost like an oily residue verging on kind of like a, a waxy residue behind. And it just kind of feels heavy and a little bit uncomfortable on my combination oily skin. So I could really see those with super oily skin not liking how this feels um, or not appreciating it. And in addition to that, it has kind of a interesting, keep in mind there's no synthetic fragrance or essential oils, but it has this kind of petroleum kind of scent that just isn't very attractive, especially when it's focusing on having goat's milk and protein. I thought it would have like maybe a lighter scent, something a little bit creamier, but it just is a little off-putting. And then the last thing that made me uh, decide that this just wasn't something that I would will be willing to come back to is you've got 1.44 ounces of product, which is about half the size that you would normally see in a typical cleansing balm. For instance, um, I just posted the review on my blog for the Pharmacy Green Clean. Um, I've been, I just, I finished this one up at the beginning of the month now that we're coming to the end of the month. I'm uh, just about a month in with the Pharmacy Green Clean and this has a hundred milliliters. So more than twice the size. And I believe the Beekman 1802 Buttermilk Cleansing Balm is more expensive. So it's kind of twice the price per ounce than even some other um, like pharmacy, which is already kind of like a high priced cleansing balm. So it, this is a very, very high priced cleansing balm and it just didn't perform the way that I would have expected it to. I could see maybe those with super duper dry skin or skin that just needs nourishment and protein or, you know, um, that you if you really like the goat's milk and like the milk based protein products, if you want that in every step of your routine and you really don't care how much it costs and you don't mind that weight that's left behind, then this might be a good option. But I think something like the Pharmacy Green Clean, the Glow Recipe, Papaya, enzyme, sorbet, whatever that was called, <laughs> the papaya cleansing balm from Glow Recipe would be another really nice option. Um, the Then I Met You Living cleansing balm is a nice option as well. And then if you don't mind pads, if you want something that's like a cleansing oil but in a pad form, the Solve Skin Care coconut oil cleansing pads are also very nice. So there's just better options, I think, out there uh, for even like half the cost. So something to keep in mind. 
Next up, let's talk about some of or the rinse off product that I finished, and that's from The Ordinary, and it's their Salicylic Acid 2% mask. Um, I finished this and then started in on a second one, in, but I'm now moved to another BHA product. There's actually, I think, a little bit still in here, so I might be able to get like one more use out of it. Um, but I am really, really liking this mask. I'm a huge fan of it. It's, uh, I believe it's kaolin based. Um, yeah, so kaolin, squalane, glycerin, there's salicylic acid in here, and then you also have charcoal. I mainly came, uh, came to this mask for the salicylic acid piece because sometimes it's hard to find a BHA that just lives by itself. So you've got like the Paula's Choice fluid, there's one from Pharmacy that I used that I wasn't super impressed with, and a couple others, but most products have AHA slash BHA in the formulation, which I don't mind, but sometimes I like to break that up. There's certain days where my skin doesn't need glycolic acid or lactic acid or something like that. I just need the salicylic acid to dive a little bit deeper. I want to minimize the potential for over exfoliation, so I'd rather customize it. Some t uh, most days I can use both, but sometimes I like having one or the other. And I really liked this because it came in that clay mask as well, so I felt like it was helping to not only break up excess sebum, help to fight against uh, blemishes and acne, but also to help remove um, excess oil and sebum as well. So it's kind of breaking it up and pulling it away. And so it was just kind of like a nice reset mask. And so yeah, I think this is absolutely something I'm gonna be coming back to. I think it's $12 and you get 50 milliliters, which is a pretty decent size for that price. Um, the other mask that I've used isn't BHA, but I'd say it's kind of my second favorite clay mask and it's from Trotiotica and it's their Accent Pore Control Mask. This is really nice, same size, 50 milliliters. It's a nice mask, helps to smooth skin, reduce the appearance of pores, but you're looking at, I believe, $35 to $50 per 50 milliliters. This is the exact same size and it's 12 bucks plus you have the BHA built into it. So I'm really, really liking the affordability, <laughs> flip it the right way, the affordability of this Ordinary Salicylic Acid 2% mask compared to some of the other ones that I have been using in the past. So um, I'm gonna have to hang on to this. I didn't realize there was a little bit left, so that's going in the save pile. Um, but very, very happy with that product from The Ordinary. Next up, we have um, one of the lotions or moisturizers that I finished this month, and that's from I'm From, and it's the Mugwort Cream. And so this one is one that I've had in my stash for quite some time. Features 73.55% mugwort extract. I love the mugwort essence. I really liked the mugwort sheet masks as well. And then the mugwort wash-off mask that has like the little bits of twig in it, or bits of mugwort. I love all of those products. They're incredibly soothing almost like instantly soothing. You put it on and by the time you're ready to wash it off or with the essence, by the time you've done a couple of layers, it's really helped to reduce redness, inflammation, um, all of those things. It was great when I was adjusting to tretinoin just to help reduce any itching or stinging or redness that I had on my skin. However, the mugwort cream wasn't quite as impactful as those other products. This particular cream, um, I've got just a teensy little bit left in there, um, has a lightweight feel or a lightweight look to it. Let's see if that'll focus, yeah. Lightweight kind of almost jelly-like feel to it. Um, so you'd think that that would translate to just absorbing incredibly quickly and feeling super lightweight on the skin, which it does if you have drier skin, I would think, like my hands tend to be dry, so it feels that way on my hands. But on my face, I always felt like it was a little bit oily, almost verging on greasy, didn't always absorb incredibly well, especially if I had layered up on toner or essence. And it just kind of left a bit of a residue on my skin each time I used it. So it wasn't perfect as far as absorption and comfortability. It didn't deliver that immediate, um, I, I like to call it kind of that triage, soothing and anti-redness that some of the other I'm From Mugwort products provide. This was kind of my least favorite of that Mugwort line. So I don't think this is something that I would be coming back to. However, those that 
aren't necessarily looking for an immediate hit of calming and soothing, but want that over time, I think incorporating something that has this high percentage of mugwort is probably beneficial over time, especially if you have drier skin that just soaks everything up. This could potentially be a really nice product, but for me that I just get bouts of dryness, or bouts of redness, bouts of irritation, where I'm just running to the bathroom and I'm like, let's see if we can fix this. Like, let's just calm everything down in the moment. This wasn't my favorite. So that's that for the I'm from Mugwort Cream. We'll talk about SPF. As you all might know, I burn through a lot of SPF because I typically apply it every two hours religiously, indoors, outdoors. It always happens. And so I've got two face sunscreens that I used or I got through. The first of which is the uh, Keep Cool. This is the Soothe Bamboo Sun Essence from Keep Cool. So this is a super lightweight, nearly kind of watery um, sunscreen or sun essence. SPF 50 plus, PA 4 pluses in this one. And it is just very lightweight, very, very uh, lightly hydrating, which is great. It's got, it features a pretty high percentage of bamboo extract in it. Let's see what we have here. Um, yeah, almost four, or just a little bit above 40% bamboo um, water. I'm sorry, it also has bamboo extract and it has several different forms of sodium hyaluronate. I did a full review video of it, so take a look at that video. Um, but this is probably one of my most favorite essences of the year or sun essences, sunscreens, if not my most favorite of the entire year. It was just super, super lightweight. There's no real scent to it. It just kind of melts into the rest of your routine and feels very, very comfortable. So I, I think this might be the one for 2020. Um, we'll see, I have one more sunscreen that I'm testing that should make it to the end of the month. And that'll kind of be the last one before I put together my favorites list for the entire year. But so far, Keep Cool is um, is number one in my book. I'm really loving it. Kind of hard to see with the lighting, but yeah, very happy. And then the other sunscreen that also really, really impressed me is from the brand Bellflower. And this is their Watermelon Fresh sunscreen. Once again, SPF 50 plus, PA 4 pluses. So this is a little bit of a heavier sunscreen. I would still consider it kind of that gel lotion, but let's see if I can get any more out of this. It's a little bit more creamy. Yeah, there's some. Um, so there's that. And so it just has a little bit more weight to it. Feels a little bit more like a cream rather than like being a drippy kind of gel lotion, but it's still very, very lightweight. Um, it features watermelon extract. It has some other hydrating ingredients in it as well. You've got niacinamide in here. Um, a Centella Asiatica makes it towards the bottom of the list. Sodium hyaluronate's in here as well. I found this one to be nicely uh, hydrating, even maybe a bit more so than the Keep Cool. And then my, uh, my third pick for this year is the Claire's Soft Airy UV Essence. So that one's kind of middle of the uh, Claire's one's in the middle. This one's the heaviest of the three. And then the Keep Cool is the lightest. So it kind of goes Keep Cool, Claire's is here in the middle, and then um, Bellflower. So um, I think this one would be better suited for those with dry skin that maybe don't get enough out of these super watery sunscreens. They need it to be a real cream or a real lotion. I think you'll find some benefit from this. But once again, no scent. There's no synthetic fragrance, no essential oils here. It just really melts into your skincare routine so you almost don't even notice that you're adding sunscreen. It's not like you're getting whiffs of it. 30 minutes down the road, or if you have your mask on top, you're not getting whiffs of your sunscreen. It's just very, very kind of offering protection in the background. It's just doing its thing. And I love that about these sunscreens that don't, um, that, in, that do encourage you to continue to apply it. They're just very, very comfortable and approachable. So this was uh, another win. Uh, essentially two of my top three sunscreens I discovered in October, which is like the last month before I start putting together my best ofs. So it was a very, very lucky year. Both of these products have been awesome. And I think this one's about $14, depending on where you pick it up for 50 milliliters. And this one's about 25, depending on you where you pick it up and they're the same size. Um, 
but I still personally for my skin type, which tends to be kind of combination oily, just depends on the season and my skin, but I really liked the Keep Cool because of that lightweight, nearly watery kind of finish. That's that for those two sunscreens. Da, da, da. Set these aside. And then the last sunscreen we have is a body sunscreen, and this is from the brand Pacifica, and it is their uh, sport sunscreen coconut probiotic sun plus skincare. So this is an SPF 50 spray on style body sunscreen that uses chemical sunscreen filters. It also has aloe leaf juice in it. It's got some caffeine. It's got a lactococcus ferment lysate, which is like a, I think, I believe it's a fermented coconut, I want to say, but it's like a probiotic derived from coconuts. Um, you also have fragrance in here as well, rosemary leaf extract. The actual ingredients list isn't that long. It's mainly just the sunscreen, alcohol, and then some other stuff. And while this wasn't a terrible sunscreen, it wasn't my favorite because the alcohol in it is very, very apparent. It has an intense kind of alcohol um, fragrance to it. And then they use the natural and essential oils for the, um, for the fragrance. And it has this kind of like coconut tropical scent to it. But those essential oils do kind of leave a little bit of an oily feeling on the skin. It's not the most comfortable sunscreen. And in addition to that, one of their biggest selling points of this particular sunscreen from Pacifica is the probiotics from the coconut. And I honestly don't think that things like caffeine and probiotics are going to make their way through your body skin and an impact to the skin on other parts of your, your body like they would your face. Your, the, um, the skin on your face is a, a little bit thinner, it can um, technically absorb ingredients a little bit easier, and can be better impacted by things like antioxidants and probiotics for anti-aging benefits and those types of things. Of course, sunscreen is awesome for the body, but I don't necessarily know if applying like a body lotion or a body sunscreen, especially a sunscreen, because that's meant to sit kind of on the outer layer, um, having like caffeine and probiotics and even like collagen and those types of things, it's a little lost when you're spraying it on your knees or on your legs, in my opinion. So I just don't know if that's necessarily a valid selling point for a body sunscreen. Um, I think things like sodium hyaluronate, things that are supposed to gather moisture and hold that to the skin would make more sense than something that's supposed to dive deep. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I wasn't too impressed with this product. It was a little oily, a little smelly, and the main selling point, it, it, I just am not 100% sold. So this one, I don't think I would come back to, but for those of you that do really like the idea of getting probiotics uh, topically wherever you can, then I guess it wouldn't hurt to, to add this to your routine. Okay, so a couple of products that I finished using for my month trial period, Rotor of Yuan, and then decided to hold the last little bits for a rainy day are both from the same brand. It's the Even Prime Cleansing Gel and the Even Prime Soothing Mist. So this is essentially their water-based cleanser. This is their face mist slash toner. And both of them have just a little bit left in them, but I was very, very happy with both products. I think I've mentioned the cleansing gel and the mist in uh, Get Unready uh, videos that are our Get Unready video that I shared last month. So uh, this is a gel-based uh, or water-based gel cleanser. This has um, coconut-based surfactants in it. It's got um, rice ferment filtrate, lactobacillus ferment. It's got yuzu extract in it, in it sodium hyaluronate, and elantoin. It's a very, very gentle yet effective cleansing gel that offers some soothing and brightening over time, and it was just so impressive. So I'll show you, I, I've definitely shown this before because I remember doing this on camera. You can kind of see if I can get it to focus. There we go. You can see that it's like just this like really thin kind of jelly. It's a very interesting consistency. And it has this nice fresh scent that's kind of enhanced through a little bit of added fragrance. But it's it has it's like a watery scent. It doesn't smell fresh like 
laundry fresh. It smells fresh, like it kind of just, they've just enhanced that glycerin kind of watery scent. It's very, very interesting. It doesn't lather a ton, but I still feel like you get that slip in that glide that you normally would. The only thing with it is with a Ferreo, I tried using it with a Ferreo cleansing tool, and this consistency, this type of jelly consistency, just didn't vibe really well with the Ferreo, and I felt like there was more friction than there normally is from like a, a foaming cleanser, so I ended up just using this with my hands, which totally works fine, and I encourage that because it just feels so good. But yeah, non-stripping, left my skin feeling really hydrated, left my skin feeling soft and smooth, and over time I noticed an, a bump in brightness. I think it's more of a support piece to some other brightening products in my routine, as opposed to it doing all the heavy lifting, but it's nice to continue to have rice ferments and uh, different ferments in each step in my routine. I kind of like that. So this was an absolute win. I've got about that much left in the bottle and I intend on saving it just in case maybe another cleanser I use down the road doesn't go well. I can fall back on this just to kind of bring my skin back to a happy place. So that's that. And then with the Soothing Mist, I've got just a little bit about here left. This is a soothing kind of facial mist slash toner slash essence. I ended up using it as an essence. So all I would do is um, and it's a spray style, so just a couple pumps in the hand, and then like that, and then pat that in. And so it doesn't really have any scent to it whatsoever. I don't think there's any essential oils or fragrance in this particular formulation, but what you do have is Galactomyces Ferment Filtrate as the second ingredient, which is awesome. Elantoin, sodium hyaluronic, niacinamide in here, plum extract, sea buckthorn extract, maticasicide, so this like beautiful combination of skin reparative ingredients plus some brightening in it, some hydrating. It's kind of that really nice blend between maybe a toner and an essence. So usually in my for my essence step, a couple pumps, pat that in, a couple more pumps, pat that in, and that's how I would use this. I think it provides a really nice immediate hit of brightness and glowiness to the skin, which I really appreciated. It helped to hydrate my skin as well. My only complaint with this product is it's coming in at 60 milliliters, which for a facial mist that you might take with you on the go or take with you to the gym, that kind of makes sense, right? But I'm using it as an essence. Most of my essence products are 100, 120, 150 milliliter products that I can just like splash on and layer on and just kind of really drench my skin in them and I don't feel like I'm having to ration them. Because I wasn't using this as a mist, because I really don't use facial mists on the go, um, I burned through this product really quickly and I was wishing that I had um, had more. I wish it was maybe double the size. Um, so yeah, I saved what the little teensy bit I had left just to kind of enjoy it maybe, test it out when it gets a little bit colder, when it's even more wintry here in, in Colorado and see how it performs. But I like it. And if you're in the market for a nice facial mist, uh, this is definitely one that I would um, point you towards, um, specifically if you're looking for a product that offers some brightening in it as well and and hydration. So if you're really into like fermented ingredients and rice ingredients for that kind of glow inducing and brightening effect, then this is a really nice mist. There's that. And then quickly we'll talk about uh, the two products. Oops. Okay, so quickly we'll talk about the two products that I used and didn't even make it a full month, did my review and I just wanted them away. Uh, one of these products I didn't even review. So the one that I did review, it's, did review, it's from Coats and it's their Lightly Tinted Lip Balm SPF 45. This is a lip balm that has sunscreen in it and it uses uh, mineral or physical sunscreen. So you have zinc oxide in here as the skin protectant. And while it did work okay and it did protect my lips, the tint that it has is this really interesting kind of brown, let's see, there we go, brown tint to it. And it just does not look good on my lips and it still doesn't mask the white cast from the zinc oxide. So I had, I ended up with these like kind of sickly looking whitish brown lips. It just wasn't a good look. 
And um, it does have like a berry scent, which was fine, but it wasn't my favorite. And so I just did not like this sunscreen lip balm. For my lips, I think the chemical-based sunscreens are where it's at because they are transparent. They're gonna let the natural lip color come through. And I just find that to be a little bit more comfortable and aesthetically acceptable for my, my taste. So people might like the tint that this product gives or might not mind that bit of white cast depending on the shade of your lips, but for me it just looked off and I decided to use it for I think about a couple, a couple of weeks, maybe a week and a half, and after using it every single day for that long, it was a no-go after that time. So this one's gonna probably get um, placed in the garbage, unfortunately. And then this one, another product that's most likely gonna get placed in the garbage, and it's so hard for me to say this because I, I really wanna like this brand. It's from Rosen, and it's their Bright Citrus Serum. So this is their vitamin C serum. It also has mulberry extract in as well, and it's 20% vitamin C, so pretty high. Um, it, obviously, vitamin C is supposed to be a powerful antioxidant that helps to reduce dark spots, hyperpigmentation, brighten the skin, support um, sunscreen, fighting free radicals, those types of things. So I love a nice vitamin C in my routine, and my favorite right now is still the Glow Recipe Pineapple C Bright Serum. And But I wanted to give this product a try just because I was curious about um, exploring other vitamin C options, but this brand specifically is a um, black owned brand and so I just really wanted to try a selection of their products and see what they're all about and I do see them pop up quite frequently on Instagram and the prices are actually pretty affordable. I'll put links to all this stuff so you can take a look on your own, but this particular product is a pump style um, vitamin C, so I found that because it's incredibly lightweight, it was hard for me to actually get a nice even layer. So one pump, even this says two to three drops, one pump is like five drops probably, I'm not really sure how they measure that, but by the time I would work it between my hands and try to pat it in, it was for the most part dried into my palms, or it would immediately absorb to like the first place I placed it. So I ended up having to use like three pumps just to get a nice layer or what felt like a nice layer on my face. It just was a very uneven application because this is so watery and lightweight. It just doesn't smooth onto skin very well. The other thing that I wasn't a fan of is this product oxidizes very, very quickly. Um, even the first time that I used it, it already started to, to look a bit yellow just from the first application. But even uh, now, I think we're about two weeks into using this, maybe a little bit longer. And you can see that the, vi I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but the vitamin C starts to dry inside this little applicating pump. So inside here, you can see dark red, oxidized residue from the vitamin C. Um, even around here, because this is a twist off, I believe an airless pump that's twist off, but the product is starting to kind of migrate its way to this seal. So you can see a, a little band of orange oxidized vitamin C serum right at the cap. It just does not look very appealing at all. And now when I pump it out, I can see the little chunks of oxidized dried serum. The actual serum itself is starting to look a bit orange. So the shelf life on this in, in my hands, I think I had it in my stash for about three weeks and then on my face for about two weeks. So I think from the time I opened the package to when I decided to stop using it, it had been about a month to a month and a half. And this product, in my opinion, is no longer usable due to that oxi oxidation. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but you, if you look in here, there's just like all this little red bits in oxidized serum. It's kind of nasty. So I was bummed. I was bummed because I really wanted to like this product and like this brand. I still have a cleanser from them, a moisturizer from them, and a toner from them. I ended up bailing on their serum, their Paloma serum, because I guess I didn't realize how many fragrant essential oils were in it. So I decided to give that to someone who doesn't experience sensitivity to essential oils or fragrant essential oils. Um, so I'm left with just a few of their products and even looking into them a little bit deeper, really reading through the ingredients list, I'm, I'm 
even still at this point hesitant after filtering out the stuff that I bought that I don't think would work for me. Um, I think I just got really, really trigger happy because it's a black owned brand and I really want to support them. And I had seen a couple good reviews that I kind of just clicked on like five or six products that on, you know, from face value looked like they might work, but even their cleanser, I'm reading it and it's like lemon extract and I'm not seeing I don't know, I'm not seeing what I would normally like to see from a cleanser on the bottle. So we'll, I'm gonna experiment with it. I'm gonna continue to give Rosen products a try, or at least the last few that I have in my stash, but my expectation is not as high as it was when I first received them or when I placed the order. Um, I'm, I'm just disappointed or a little bit disheartened by the results from this first product. I think in the week or, uh, week or two that I did use it, my skin felt fine. I wasn't reacting poorly to it. Um, my skin does pretty well with vitamin C, even under high concentrations, but the oxidation, this packaging just seems flawed. Uh, it just, it, it's not ideal for me, and it's something that I'm probably just gonna throw away because at this point it has oxidized to the point that I wouldn't even give this to a friend or family member. So that's, that, that are all, that's all the empties slash kind of empties from my routine. Essentially, the things that I won't be using um, anymore, but might come back to the, the even prime soothing mist and cleansing gel I will be coming back to should I need them. So uh, that's that. Let me know if you have any questions or need additional information about any of my empties for October. I will leave the links for all of these products, including pricing and size of the product for you. So feel free to click on any of those, take a look at those products. And if you have any questions or you need any additional information, just shoot me a comment. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Happy October moving into November. And as always, stay glowing. Bye.